Okay, I'm here with Fenton Gruen, who has just announced his candidacy for state senate over the present incumbent, Democrat uh, Senator Silly. And I want to thank you very much for taking a couple moments to talk with Granite Rock. You're welcome. A um, couple questions from the speech, which I recorded earlier. Um, one of the things that you really stressed was the structural imbalance of the budget that's going to be approaching $500 million, half a billion dollars, and that you said that is, you know, that certainly is not fiscal sanity. So my question to you in a little bit more detail is, what are you going to do about it? If you were king instead of running for this democratically elected seat, and if you had the power, how would you be cutting the budget or saving money in the budget in order to return us to fiscal sanity? Do you have any concrete ideas at this point? Well, first of all, George Washington resisted any impulse to be king for the day, and so would I. I strongly believe in our democratic form of government. Now, having said that, we do have to have solutions, and one of the things we can do, there are a number of things that we need to do. First of all, we need to look at what the state budget was in all of its areas before the Democrats increased at 20 percent. So we, we can start with that and look at how did we do it before and what would the state budget look like if the Democrats had only done a 1 percent increase a year or a 1.5 percent increase a year, which would have been responsible. Uh, so that's one place to start looking. Another thing that that I believe we need to do is we need to look for solutions that private business has has done and has used for years and years. They they look at technology and find better ways of doing things all the time. They're constantly looking for better ways. And I'll give one example that everybody will be familiar with. Uh, if you go to an airport today, getting a ticket to fly is an entirely different process than it was 15 years ago. If you went to an airport 15 years ago, you had two options to get a ticket. You either went to a travel agent and you bought a ticket in advance, or you would go to the airport and you would wait in line uh, to buy it from a ticket agent. And if you went to American Airlines, let's say there might be 40 ticket agents lined up in a row, and you would wait in line for 20 minutes, half hour, sometimes an hour, to buy your ticket at the airport. Now, you go online, you buy your ticket, you even print your boarding pass before you go to the airport. Uh, you go to the airport, and if you do have to check in there, you go to a kiosk, and you do about 90% of the work yourself, and then you walk up to the counter, you check your baggage, they check your ID, and you go to the gate. An entirely different process. It has about one in four as many people. They, they, they do it with, or even less than that. Uh, probably is one in six, and that's just judging from looking at the people there. Uh, and they do a better job, more efficiently, with higher customer satisfaction and fewer lines. Now, how many places in the state of New Hampshire can we do that? Uh, DMV? Yeah, I think we can. I think we can drastically improve service and reduce cost by taking that type of an approach. Now, I'm not saying we take that example and apply it to every area. I'm saying we take the example of business applying technology and applying common sense to save money and to reduce costs and improve services and reduce waiting time, etc. So that's another, another way that I think we need to do it. And then the third way is I believe that the next legislature, and I believe it will be a Republican legislature, needs to establish a number of budget teams that hone in on each department and then within each department has another smaller team and we look right down to the bottom of the department. I am not in favor of going to a department head and saying we're asking you to reduce costs five percent because we all know what they'll do. They will, they will cut funding for the cop that helps a little old lady across the street or they'll cut funding for somebody's favorite uh, program at school or they'll cut funding for busing, or they'll cut funding, here's a good one, they'll cut funding for sports, uh, you know, is what the schools would do. So if we go to the, to the heads of the departments who have a bureaucratic interest in protecting their fiefdom, uh, then they're going to cut from the top down, they're going to cut in visible ways that, that people will see and that will create a backlash to that cut. I want to go in there and I want to find ways of finding uh, system problems, system uh, inefficiencies that we can make improvements 
And while we make those improvements, we are reducing cost and improving services. Oh. And we have to do that from bottom up, and it's going to take a whole group of people. The, the state budget's far too complicated for one or two people to look at that. We, get, we need to work together, and, and we need to work together with a governor that wants to help us, and I'm, I'm excited about a number of candidates that I think could, could be a real plus for the state, uh, Republican candidates that would, that would help us from the governor's side to do that. Okay. The other thing that you brought up was on the socially uh, conservative type side. You mentioned the parental notification. And, you know, there's a story that came out today out of, actually, a couple last couple of days out of Washington State where it seems that it is illegal for the school to be able to put a 15-year-old girl, send her to Planned Parenthood, have a, an abortion procedure uh, performed upon her, and the mother never knew. And it's just come out today that they can also send the, these kids, and they are children, to, uh, for other medical uh, help as well, be it a mental health clinic or what have you. Now, the Democrats here in the state tossed out the parental notification bill. Would that be something from the social area, and although we're concentrating on the, on the fiscal, but from the social area, do you think that that would be a worthwhile policy endeavor that you might get involved with, to bring that back, to put it into force, to get government out between parents and the kids? I absolutely would, would uh, work to reinstate the parental notification law. To me, it, it, it doesn't even make sense to require parental consent for a child to get aspirin in school, but allow them to get an invasive and dangerous surgical procedure like abortion without their parents' knowledge or consent. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense, even aside from the life issue, which I'm pretty passionate about. But even aside from the life issue, from a parental responsibility and a parental rights aspect, it doesn't make sense at all. I, I would definitely work to reinstate the parental notification bill. Okay, well, very good. I know, Fenton, that there are a number of people who still wish to talk with you, so I want to say thank you very much for your time, and uh, I will probably be bumping into you in other events around the state. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoyed talking to you. Thank you, sir.